Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. We got a great show in there. We're going to talk about Spencer Strider, Cy Young. We're going to do a little college football talk. We're going to talk Shohei Otani and his injury and what it means for his potential free agency. But we're going to start off the show with the biggest story in Atlanta sports today, and that is Jalen Mayfield getting cut by the Falcons. The roster cuts aren't official until tomorrow when they'll cut the team down to 53 men. But they did make some initial cuts. And listen, the writing was on the wall for Mayfield. He'd been playing terrible. He'd been playing terrible against backups. It just, it doesn't even look like he can be in the NFL. Like, I, did, I wouldn't even shock me if he doesn't even find himself on a practice squad. Like, this could be the end of the line. The Falcons gave him three legitimate opportunities. Obviously, he had the injury last year. But he had plenty of time to establish himself, at, at the very least, as a backup. Because, listen, we've talked about it all off season and especially recently with injuries and stuff to Matt Hennessy. Um, they need it. They need a backup. They're looking for backups. Like they, if they, he had the perfect opportunity to establish himself on this team. Like there is no capable backups currently on this roster. And I think that will change with other roster cuts, but there are no current capable backups. Like they needed a guy like Jalen Mayfield to stand up and look competent. He just did it. He has been one of the worst offensive linemen in all the league since he came into the league, whether it was a starter or a backup, a tackle or a guard. He's just not good. Like He's just not good. And they finally just ripped the Band-Aid off and did what they probably should have done, maybe even last year. <laughs> yeah, better late than never. Um, I think that's the most notable thing about all of this is what you just said. The Falcons had no depth, and he still got cut, even before Tuesday's deadline. Tuesday's 4 p.m. deadline. And Falcons, Arthur Smith came out and said the Falcons are not going to make any more cuts until they do all at one time at the deadline. Why they're doing that, I don't know. Probably waiting for other teams uh, to potentially scoop up some of those backups. I'm not exactly sure, but this is like, they only got rid of four guys over the weekend. And Jalen Mayfield was one of them. And the rest of them are, you know, undrafted free agents who, you know, really were never going to be, in line for even a a roster battle uh, where Jay Jalen Mayfield was expected to at least he's a third round pick from just two years ago, two drafts ago. I mean, this is a terrible look for the organization for him himself. Uh, it just, it's an all around bad situation. And I do respect uh, the regime finally cutting tides, uh, admitting when you're wrong. Uh, it's a sunk cost third round pick we can all you know yap on about how you know we could have had uh Quinn Mirnez or Mirnez however you say his name Denver center looks really good we all know about Trey Smith he went in the sixth round to the Chiefs and looks like an absolute stud for the Chiefs uh we can all you know hindsight is always 2020 uh but there are good things the Falcons did some good things in the draft no GM's ever gonna bat a thousand uh Jalen Mayfield is just a uh, pretty pretty ugly war on uh, Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith's res resume. Um, they all don't work out. This one was just a glaring mistake. And the worst part about it is he was a decent run blocker. Like, he definitely had enough in the tank as a run blocker to make a roster. That That's enough. But he left so much to be desired uh, when protecting the quarterback in pass sets. That And, and, it, and it's such a pass-happy league that you can't make one of the – one of the team that runs the ball almost more than everybody, you can't make that team. You have a hard time making the NFL in today's pass happy league. I mean, the writing was on the wall, like he said. Uh, and I don't think it's crazy what you said about he may never play in the NFL again. I mean, it's clear that you can't make the team that drafted you that runs the ball more than just about every other team. That team is going to go to bat for you. Now you're just on the outside looking in. It's a bad look for the team, bad look for him. I hope he figures it out, but I wouldn't bet my dollar on it. Yeah, that also, as we said, has absolutely no depth at the position. Like not only that, like you've That's got like the craziest part. you've got like the trifecta of we run the ball, we drafted you high. And we have no depth and you still are getting cut before we even make the final cuts. Like there's only one cut line. And I, I you think about why they might do something. I think maybe just because if other guys start getting cut, they want to have like spots available where they could scoop them up. And, and like, he was just an obvious, that's the only reason I can see it. Like, I don't think it was like, Hey, we're going to try to embarrass him. Oh, we got to let him know he sucks. I think it's just like opening up roster spots in case something becomes available, whether it's free agency, whether it's trade, which as we said, that's got to be the plan. Like, I don't think the Falcons can go into week one with what they have because it wasn't just Jalen Mayfield. I mean, 
I only watched highlights of the game, and I know you guys watched it because I was traveling down down to Florida. But nobody could block. On uh, nobody could block. And I know they were going against starters and stuff like that of the Steelers, and it wasn't really a fair matchup. But it doesn't matter. Like you cannot have guys out there because if someone does get injured, you ain't going to be going up against backups. You're going to be going <laughs> up against starters. And, and I mean, Desmond Ritter. I was sitting there. I was telling you. I was like, the only way Desmond Ritter doesn't go over his 15 and a half pass total touchdown total, which is what it is in Vegas, is if he gets injured. Well, if there's some offensive line injuries, I'm now worried about poor Desmond Ritter's life because he would be hopeless. I mean, he would be hopeless. I mean, could you imagine? It would have been malpractice to have sent Desmond Ritter out there in that preseason game. It would have been malpractice, like organizational malpractice. That's how bad it was. I mean, it was awful. And Jalen Mayfield might go down in the history of my, where I know about football. Let's say I, I, I know what I'm talking about for the last 10 years of my life or something. Like I pay attention in a different way. He might go down as the worst pass blocker I've ever laid two eyes on. Because we got a plenty enough sample size. It might be the worst pass blocking offensive lineman I have ever laid eyes on. And I'm not even trying to hate on him. Like, I'm really not. Because you almost feel bad for him. The guy's probably never going to play in the league. He's going to have to find another job, like, in, in life. But he might be the worst pass blocker I've ever laid eyes on. You know, it was like that time when, like, Eddie Rosario was just hitting, like, below 100. And then he finally had eye surgery. I was like, oh, it makes sense. You know, he literally couldn't see the ball. I bet something could come out with Jalen Mayfield where it's like, oh, he has vertigo or something where like he was off balance, like something where there was like, oh, he had no chance from the get go because he had, you know, this injury or this excuse. I don't know what it was. Maybe the back injury is more serious than everybody knows about. But it is so bad, like you're saying that there has to be an excuse because there's absolutely no way he was playing well at Michigan, one of the biggest programs in the country. And then the Falcons, who would have done a decent job drafting under this new regime? Draft you in the third round. I mean, something has got to go wrong. And yeah, I said it last week with Jake on Friday's episode. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on the YouTube, sportstalkatl.com. I also wrote a few pieces on it, sportstalkatl.com. Uh, it was malpractice. You said it. It was malpractice. The even send Taylor Heineke, our backup, against Steelers starters with that offensive line. Tyler Vrabel going up against TJ Watt. Looks like, you know, one of us taking on a third grader. It was absolutely pathetic. The guy never had a chance. I feel bad for him. Uh, but then again, just like you said, these guys aren't going to come in in an injury and face backups. Those are the guys who they're going to face. So we got a real good glimpse at what an injury along the offensive line could potentially be for the Falcons. And it's devastating. They absolutely yeah. need to spend some money and sure up that offensive line depth. Because it's, it's yeah. a glaring hole. I mean, and the Falcons have, you know, I don't they know what money. it is. They have thirteen million dollars to spend. Yeah. I mean, they've got draft picks they can that they can make. And I, I know someone was talking about the Trey Lance like making a deal. Oh well, we don't have like a fifth and a seventh round or last. Hey, buddy, you can't. I, I don't care what we have. Like, I don't care if it takes a draft pick that we need to shore this up. I don't care if it takes money, whatever it's got to be. And they're, like we said, we keep talking about it uh, leading up to these cuts. They're going to be at least competent players because what we saw was incompetence on the offensive line it, it, it it's unacceptable like you cannot send out your starting running right you can't send out guys like Bijan robinson behind that line you can't send out desmond Ritter behind that line and expect him to be anything i mean we saw what a, a good quarterback over his career was several times with matt ryan behind bad offensive lines this would be worse than that and you, the and you you got a, a quarterback with no experience i mean it would be malpractice i mean they've, they've got to fix this up Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about Spencer Strider, one of the hottest pitchers on the planet. Could he take home the NL Cy Young Award?